Welcome to Seven Sports Big Replay. A great round in the South Australian National Football League today. We had an upset at the Thebiton Oval. West Torrens winning and denting the hopes of a final five aspirant once again two weeks in succession. In total, 34,295 people went to the five games. And let's have a look at some of the scores. West Torrens winning at Thebiton, 16 goals, 10 to South Adelaide, 13, 14, before a crowd of just over 3,600. North Adelaide and Norwood today. Norwood winning 14-17 to North Adelaide 10 goals 12. Before a good crowd at Prospect, 7,034. Norwood cementing their position in the five at the moment. North Adelaide still out of the five by a couple of games. And West Adelaide scored one of the big wins today at the Woodville Oval. They won 26 goals 17 to 16 goals 7 by Woodville. Trevor Pearson continued his great form, getting six goals for Woodville and a crowd of just over 3,000 people. Well, the first of our replay games tonight, and it was a great game too, and a spectacular last quarter. We're showing you the last quarter in full, the game between Glenelg and Sturt. What an important game it was for both sides today at Football Park. We had a crowd of just in excess of 11,000 people, and they witnessed a thrilling finish. It was an important game for Glenelg to stay in the top three, and David Holst, or to keep in touch with the top three, David Holst today playing his 150th game. Michael Lunas dropped out of the Glenelg side before the game. He was replaced by Jamie Mason, so we had three changes to the side that were beaten last week by Port Adelaide. McFarlane, McInerney and Lunas all out injured and are coming into the side. Uh, we had Jamie Mason, as I said, coming in to replace. And he sat on the interchange bench with young Tony Simons going to a half-court flank. For Sturt today, Casey was out injured and Donaldson and Derrington came into the side, recovered. And Mousley came into the side for the first time. He joined Sturt two weeks ago from South Adelaide, a veteran of 212 games. Two of the very popular figures in South Australia, captains of the respective clubs, Paul Weston and Rick Davies. They looked to be a good toss to win, with Paul Weston winning it. There had been a breeze in the reserves match today. And Glenelg led by four points at quarter time. They led by four points at half time. But when, when we pick up the game, at the start of the final term, Sturt are in front by nine points. Robert Odie's in the commentary position with me. Points are different, but German's goal on the siren has given Glenelg a real chance. 8-17 to 10-14. Carey played a magnificent third quarter against Spill. Free kick against Carey going to Spill. Running into him at the centre bounce. Spill's long kick to centre half forward. Frost almost. Hollis trying to get a quick kick away. Derrington played it in front of himself beautifully. Almost got it to Pfeiffer. Frost goes toward the boundary line. McGuinness is after it. He had seven kicks in that third quarter. McGuinness after only having five to half time. Went without it. Looked well sluggish today, but did that well. Short into the centre. Sewers put the long sleeve Guernsey on at three-quarter time. Plays it back to McGuinness. Graham will run him down. McGuinness just got it over to Hine. Left foot around the corner. McDermott, Fry missed an easy one. Simons cleverly done. Weston, Simons, Redbone ran him down. Redbone, Hine, Fry, ball up. Important tackle by Redbone. Seems to be the contrast to the umpiring, Bruce, from the first half to the second. There's no free kicks now. In the first half, there was free kicks for all sorts of small, minor dis misdemeanors. Spill in the path of Wiseman. Sewer did well. Sewer broke one tackle from Fry, but hung on to it a bit long. Peter Reed in the back, free kick against Mason. Michael Graham receiving from Peter Reed. Dirt playing wide. Weston dropping back into the centre. Short kick to Spill. Head of Carey. Sturt are going to get players up the ground. Sewer lurking in the centre. Sturt going wide. Glenelg looking for a rebound through Sewer if they can. Corn spoils it away. He's playing centre half back on Howard now. Howard with a magnificent recovery though. 
kicking it into the pocket. Five is pushed out of the road and Barrett drops back for a beautiful take. Tim Pake inside half forward. He won't want to get too close. Sewer just waiting in the centre of the ground. Just Hine. Out the corns and out of bounds. Sewer patiently waiting back here, Bruce. Tim Pake won't want to get too close to the pack. Spill and Carey. Carey played a magnificent third quarter. He's up to his tricks again. Here's the ball towards Sewer. Well done, Zuzi. Caught with the ball. Whittlesey recovers. Third on the rebound. Zubranek. Over half forward to Davies. He'll take the mark on his chest. An opportunity here for Sturt. Two players down behind the play. We'll pick them up shortly. One from each side. And Davies, this is a very, very important kick. He's fitting to the Sturt player again. Same spot as last week when Michael Bennett calling for the stretcher. Drop pump by Davies as Chris is to behind. Davies today has kicked one goal for Sturt 10-15 to 8-17. And the Sturt player is Wiseman and the Glenelg player is Sewer. So they're the two players that are injured. Play will be stopped here at Football Park. The stretchers are coming out. Mousley's warming up for Sturt and there will be a break in play. back the game goes on drop punt out of side Davies is point with the last kick great mark for Spill against Carey 15 meter penalty not played half forward flank Spill Carey grabbed his arm then <laughs> he's very lucky he didn't drop punt Davies in the front spot Coleman Davies thumped it away Howard and McGuinness after it with Carey Carey plays it cleverly to McGuinness he missed it again free kick to Carey McGuinness may have heard the whistle and stop. Short to Barrett. Barrett through the centre. Simon's in the front spot. Duthie. Simon's now weighted down. Mousley got an important touch. Gave it to Fry. Fry took all day to get rid of it. Did it well in the end. Saw Brennan Howe. That's the way it's going. Corns brilliantly done. That Ball was. In. That was brilliantly done. Running with the ball. Couldn't find the flight. Just fisted it away from between Brendan Howard's arms, waiting to take possession. Spill and carry. Corns, little kick toward the boundary. Gained about 20 metres. And again, the umpire will bring the ball back in. There are 10 points of difference. Desperate need for a breakthrough here by both sides. Next goal vital, isn't it? If Glenelg can get it, they're in with a great chance. If Sturt can get it, well, it's going to make it extremely difficult for the Bays to get back. Carry to Howard. Howard's quick kick. Pfeiffer, Barrett. Barrett playing pretty well at the moment. Corns. McGuinness will get run down again. Now Sturt are in. Zoom with a long one to the goal front. Getting set. Davies. Oh, great mark. That is unbelievable. Keith Coleman. Perfect position. Davies slipped around the front of him. Ran underneath the ball. With the worst kick in the world to mark. As clean as a whistle. He took that out of the air. He had a chance in the third quarter to give Sturt a commanding lead with the same goal. He's very stiff in the arms, very tight. Got it. Davies has kicked two goals for. Sturt get the break, 11-15 to 8-17, and it's going to be very hard for the Bays to get back from here. Tony Pfeiffer did that very well then when he competed for that ball with Barrett. And then Brendan Howard's kicked from that half-forward line around his body and into the square or into Zilm rather, who kicked into the square. Was very well done, and that mark was a superb take. It's interesting the fact that the uh, Sturt coach put Gary Mousley straight in the back, not concerned in any way with upsetting the balance of the side. The players where they played all day, he's left them there, just made a direct replacement for Jeff Wiseman. Let's hope that Jeff Wiseman is OK. Carey keeping going for Glenelg, giving Kernahan a big rest. He got very tired in the third quarter, Kernahan. Spill. Spill won the tap. Corns in trouble. Quick kick to Carey. Drop kick by Carey. Straight to Eddie Fry. Fry bangs it back with a long screw punt to the outer side. Pulse takes a fine chest mark. Sun shining brightly for the moment. 
Zoom offering no resistance at half forward at the moment. Brad Bone, beautiful spoil to Derek, and he's played a good game for Sturt this afternoon. Kicks it in towards Hollis. Davies off his hands. Nice take, Pullman. probably would have been worse off than giving this free kick away for holding the ball. The Sturt players had the full place of goal then Bruce if he'd have zipped that out there was three of them lurking. Paul Hollis. Kicks this I think Sturt at home. Drop punt. Gonna go close. Just miss. Should have had their chances Sturt. I suppose at the same time we're have had a few chances too but Hollis has kicked two goal four. Sturt 11-16 to 8-17. Coleman to bang it back in. Screw punt, prodigious kick. Carey using the body, spill thump it away. Hollis and Frost. Hollis keeps his balance pretty well and it'll be a ball in. Pate dropping back now on the sewer. Spill coming back into the centre of the ground, giving Sturt a bit of defensive play. It'll be Davies and Carey. Carey, beautiful position. Davies from the back, recovers quickly. Dives on top of the ball. Gets it out through his legs somehow or other. Carey dies, beautifully done. Barrett. Back to that defensive action. Miss kicks it, fortunately, because if it had gone long, he'd have been in trouble. But he's found his skipper, Paul Weston. Across the ground. Spoiled backwards there by Simons. Mousley. Handballs it away. Howard. Beautiful body play. Flies off into Zubernick. Zubernick with a left-hand handball to Motley. Motley's got Smith up at half forward, and he's positioned the kick perfectly for him. And that's a safe kick. It's very well done, even though it missed the body. The short kick wasn't on. We saw Glenelg in the last quarter try that short kick up the side and miss. Played over his head, out of bounds. Mason Davies. Hartfield on. Sorry, Robert. She's right. Davies. Zilm. Zilm has kicked a floater off hands and through for a behind to Sturt. Zilm's had some opportunities. We couldn't credit him with a point then, I don't think. Well, that's rushed. Three goals are different, so an important point for Sturt. There are three straight kicks in front. Coleman's missed kick. Graham's got the chance. Corns will try and run him down. Graham back toward Howard. Howard flat-footed. Got Pate running. Pate can seal it, I think. Got some Pate Pate. 20 metres out. He's got it. I don't think he'll never get back now. 12-17 to 8-17. Pate's got three and the double blues are running. Well, Graham Corns will never forget that. Timmy Pake is as fast as Michael Graham off the mark. Sturt have discovered a young player who's got that acceleration. Graham Cause thought he had him then, went across to get him, and Tim Pake just changed down a gear with tremendous acceleration, kicked the ball three or four metres clear of Graham Corns, who in fact was playing very close to it. Four goals are different. That's been the biggest margin all day. Carey trying to lift his side. Smith played a very useful game. Hind missed it, got back on it. Smith got into his back a bit. Hind did well. Hartfield must do something. Reed tapped it in front of himself, then recovered well. Played it to the boundary line. Well done, Peter Reed. Hartfield's been disappointing. Well, Nell must be wondering now. Sturt have got no back play. Carey dropping into half back. They'll have to kick it wide if they can get their hands on it. Weston. It's like Painter. They've got it wide too. Carey moving across with Zilm and Holst. Holst takes it, gives it to Carey. He's too good. The big fellow. Corns runs on for him. Across the ground to Weston. Weston flies, marks the ball. Beautiful reflex handball. Marshall, who's the best kick in their side for accuracy, into the goal square. Sims is, is tackled and will take the free kick. Peter Kerhead grabbing him on the recovery. Trevor Sims thinking twice about the short kick to Zubernick. Chooses to go wide. Beautiful spoil by Simons. Tony Fife with an opportunity. McGinnis putting a hand on it. Motley to Whittlesey. Whittlesey's kick not good enough. by Painter. Pfeiffer after Weston, another handball to Carey. I think the big fellow's feeling it. He's done a wonderful job this afternoon. Hide around his body. Duthy at the forward pocket with an opportunity to give Glenelg yet another chance to win this game. Got to kick this one, Duthy. Long way out for him. Hartfield on the lead. Peter Carey's exhausted at the centre-half forward, Bruce, with his head down between his legs. Well, he might be. He should be too. That's Duthy's first goal in league football. And an important one.
to this. He's kicked one two today. First time he's kicked the goal since coming down from Broken Hill and Glenelg are within three goals. 9-17 to 12-17. Now Marshall takes one handball, he's got a lot of players loose, take his pick, Carey becoming the dominant player for Glenelg, drop punt, beautiful, McGuinness, what a game, what game uh, Carey's playing now, getting a lift Glenelg, McGuinness to the goal front, Kernahan should take it, no, couldn't get to him, Hartfield couldn't take it, fly quickly to Reed. Reed did very well. He's playing beautifully. That's two saves he's made the last couple of minutes. It just look all class. Feel from the back. Holst, it's out here that Sterner getting done. They've got to get something from Jill. He's doing nothing on this half-forward flank. They need him to give some rebound and to hold the ball in at least. Pfeiffer coming from behind Sewer. Sewer the painter. Chris Radbrose is jogging along, making hardly any efforts at the moment. Fry knocks it back to Painter again. Painter wide. Beautiful place with the McGinnis. Simons is on his own. Peter Motley's lost. Coming across to him now. Long kick by McGinnis to the front of the goal square. Beautiful mark. All the Round his body. The skipper. He's missed. Paul Weston. That's one, another one of those goals that should have been kicked, Bruce. Simple goal. Panic the kick. A lot of pressure out there, though. And Kernahan, very close to marking that. It fell out through his hands. Try to bring it back in. Three goals a difference, or two goal five. Beautiful screw punt. Carey underneath it with Pake. McGuinness. Definitely, uh, Lanell Grove is a lifting here. McGuinness has got Hartfield on the lead. Now, Hartfield is a very long kick normally. He's going to play it short behind in the pocket. Chris Radbrove and Andrew Zill on that other side of the ground are giving Sturt big headaches. Hines is going short. Kernahan. Student slipped over when Kernahan made his lead. Kernahan has missed a couple of very important kicks. And if Glenelg have ever needed one, well, it's right now. Eddie Fry had the opportunity to intercept then. Bruce, he just stood there. Don't know whether he's feeling tired. He didn't anticipate that short kick at all. He was in between it. Drop punt by Kernahan. He's Goal. got it. The base might be back. 3-2 to Kernahan. 10-18 to 12-17. I said five minutes ago, Sturt were home after Pate Gold. But maybe Glenelg have got a chance. It's Brad Bone coming back. Ian Hyde on the centre wing, playing a very good game for Sturt. Something's got to happen on that far side of the ground. Maybe Michael Graham's got to go across there. Paul Bagshaw shifting Andrew Zill now. He's shifting it. Michael Graham and Brendan Howard to the other side of the ground. What a game we've got on our hands. The Bay's coming back. And that's one of the reasons. Carey, West and the Simons. Simons quickly on the Painter. Painter to Weston. Important kick. Weston has nearly got it. No Sims. Well done. Got to pay the behind. 10-19 to 12-17. Weston's kicked two points in the last minute. Sims to bring it back in. Glenelg have lifted. What a game Peter Carey's play for them after half time. Sims as the crowd roar. Straight down the middle. Carey pulls over. Spill couldn't take it. Simons tapped it on. Fry. Cleverly to Motley. Radbone. Now Sturt might be in. Left foot. Not well directed. Pfeiffer used the body very well. Hollis is clever. Hollis from centre half forward. Davies will shepherd it. Behind. Hollis has kicked too far. Hollis played that badly, Bruce. In the end, he did the same as Paul Weston at the other end of the ground. Hurry to kick when he broke clear. He thought he was under pressure because he slipped. And he actually had the chance to run another five. Beautiful kick by David Frost. Carey from the back. Spills knocks it towards Pate. Carey recovered. Weston. Weston. Sewer. Radbone in between. Well done, Sewer. Waited for Hine. Hine kicking over the top. Mousley. 
first mark for Sturt and Hodgson. Playing on one. towards Michael Grant. Calm as you like. That's experience. Only 212 games does that. Whittlesey. Fly. Kicking wide and strong towards Graham and Howard. In the back of Howard is Ford. Just lets it run past Howard for Graham. Beautiful bit of footy. Graham for lovely take by Barrett. Graham recovering. Barrett knocks it out. He's not out of play yet. Three kick. Holding on. Gets Brendan Howard. Showing some emotion. 15 metre penalty. Gee, Barrett did that well, Robert, because Sturt had a chance and he made it, Barrett. Yeah, I think Michael Graham tried to take the ball. If he'd have kicked it past him. Just decisions. Players fly. Whittlesey. Carey and Spill. Carey, beautiful handball again. Short kick. takes possession, loses the ball, Sims, Hartfield, lost his boot Hartfield, he got it to Simons though, hasn't got a boot Hartfield, now he goes back short to Painter, smothered by Whittlesey, free kick, free kick to Painter, in the back again, Supernick, Sturt, hate the decision, listen to this crowd roar, and Painter doesn't normally miss these. A magnificent trap off the boot, has kicked three points left foot missed it for John Painter four points 20 minutes gone Glenelg 10-20 and Sturt 12-18 tremendous finish full marks to Glenelg they were down and out 10 minutes ago but they've lifted Carey has given them some hope Sims to bring it back in missed kick Zubernick on that Zubernick from half-back got close to the man on the mark. Whittlesey running for him. It's a beautiful mark, isn't he, Whittlesey? Zubernick's got some skills, Bruce. He mustn't allow himself to get upset. He's one that goes up three away in towards Zilm. Zilm over the top. Bill. Bill's gone. He's Bill in the pitch. He's rucked all day. Holst again. Played a beautiful game at half-back. Michael Graham running down the ground to Sewer. Oh, Graham with sheer pace has saved Sturt again. A short kick by Sewer. Reed, who's played some beautiful footy. Radbone. Sims knocks it on. Beautifully done to Zubernick. Breaks clear. He'll go over the top to Howard. Howard with the run of the ball. Smith. Howard. Running on. Well done, Chris McDermott. Came from nowhere. Out of bounds on the full now, Pye said. Hit the back of Brendan Howard's foot. A bit unfortunate not to get a free kick. Corns. Long kick. Towards the centre, Spill, indecision by Sturt players, Radbone with one arm hurled, takes it in the right hand, that is fast football, and he kicks the ball over half forward to Davies again, big fellow with one hand, gives a short one to Pfeiffer, Pfeiffer, full face to goal, the one fellas put it through, unbelievable. Two goals to Pfeiffer, Davies made it though. That's the one thing that nobody's done all day, Bruce. They've run into goals. Johnny Painter, Rick Davies, Paul Hollis, Paul Weston, you can name them all day today. Having shots for goal and missing them. It was Tony Pfeiffer and Glenelg early in the season that kicked the two goals in the third quarter that enabled um, Sturt to catch up and finally take the lead after an eight-goal start. Everybody going home in the stand now. Unbelievable after that goal of five. All Glenelg supporters, obviously, they must think they're gone. Can't, can't imagine why anyone would leave a game like this. Marshall, quick kick to the pocket. Painter, he'll make it. Painter from the pocket. Ten minutes to go yet, Bruce. Short, the West Sturt. coming out. McGuinness, he'll kick this one. McGuinness has got his first. It's 11, 20 to 13, 18. We've got about 10 minutes of football left. You'd never go home in a game like this. It's been a great game. The game's starting to now find players desperate to score goals. And in this last 10 minutes, 8 to 10 minutes of the game, there'll be some goals kicked. 23, almost 24 minutes. Carey continues to keep going. So does Spiel. Neither one really. Derrington thumps it forward. Zoom. Pate trying to break the tackle. Well done there by McDermott. He's playing in defence. Behind. Behind the corner. That was a great grab. To McGuinness. In the back against Graham. 
Skater McGuinness pushed him square in the back yeah. and McGuinness will put Glenelg in with another chance McGuinness had five kicks to half time he's now down to have his 17th looks sluggish early drop punt Kernahan taking a run at it takes the mark Kernahan's got three goal two he kicks this Glenelg are within a kick with about eight minutes to go come back when McGuinness kicked it a minute ago. Kernahan, drop punt, has hit the post. That's crawl. 3-3 to Kernahan. John Halbert must be bitterly disappointed with that. Bad luck to Stephen Kernahan. Nine points are different. Sims to bring it back in with a drop punt. Spill sets himself. Carey, magnificent mark at the back. Spill wants the free kick. Bill's got to lift his game a bit, Bruce. He's starting to yield a little to Peter Carey's body weight. Maybe Davies will come on. Michael Graham's run on again. Done some beautiful things this last quarter. Western around his body. Sims and Kernahan. Front position. Brenton Hartfield. Hartfield came to Glenelg from Norwood from six weeks ago. Has been disappointing. He's on the interchange today. It's usually an accurate kick. He hasn't missed. The Bays are within three points. Hartfield's got a goal. Glenelg at 12-21. Sturt 13-18. We're in the time on, but there's at least five minutes to go. At least.
Yes, Harrison. Good play through half forward there. Lovely take by Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer got it over and Howard with a delightful tap on to Darrell Smith. Darrell Smith into the goal square. Good body crash there between Corbin and Davies. Seeing Davies take an excellent mark and convert with a very well executed back screwy to give Sturt what is now, I would say, a commanding lead. What a splendid finish it's been to what at times has been a disappointing game in the first half, a bit scrambly, but it's been a wonderful second half, particularly this last quarter. Spiel in there working at hard. Graham, Sturt finishing it off, didn't kick it with his right foot. He saw Howard out on the left, or on his right. Howard to the goal square. Davies and Pullman. Pullman thumped it away. Free kick to Sturt to the nil. Must be. Graham played the advantage, but only as far as Howard. Howard from the half-forward flank. Drop punt. Take underneath it. Carey getting there. Almost Carey. Sewer. Holst. Been a fine player in his 150th game. Radbone tackled it beautifully. Howard or Shepard Hine. Radbone comes around onto his left foot. Short of the spill. And playing more than 30 minutes. Sturt are safe. They'll still be on top of the ladder. And what a game it'll be next Sunday when they take on Port Adelaide. Spill. Carey. Who would know whether Graham was holding on to Carey or Carey was holding on to Graham? <laughs> fell into the arms of Rick Davies. Poor old Peter Carey. He must be absolutely exhausted. He's a wonderful player. So is this fellow, Rick Davies. Maybe too far out for Rick. He'll need his very best. Legs would be tired. Drop punt is strong. He's going to go close. I think he's just missed. 12.21, Davies has kicked three goal, five. Quickly McDermott brings it in, Corns on a lead with Carey. Derrington, Corns beautifully done. Left foot around his body. Hind missed it. Radbone, flipped it after half time. Beautiful pass to Graham. Pass by Ayo, but Ayo hasn't heard it. Now he plays it on a centre half forward. Screw punt toward the pocket. McDermott, Smith at the back. McDermott at the front. Barrett, free kick will go to Glenelg. Glenelg to relieve. Mark Hewitt, right in the back pocket. It's been a fantastic game. The football's been fast all day. The tackling's been fierce. Leaving to half back. Carey and Corns. Corns takes it, plays on. He's gone. They've ripped it off in Pfeiffer. He's caught in turn. Hake is in the centre, Michael Graham, Chris Bradbone, Grant Zubernick, Michael Graham, left foot by Graham, curling around and through for one behind, and the goal umpire is down, but not out, 15 goals, 20 Sturt, Glenelg, 12 goals, 21. One goal, one to Michael Graham, but a very effective game, he was carried off by two Sturt trainers at half time, we doubted whether he'd come back, but I think it's been fortunate for Sturt that he did. He had a tremendous third quarter. Coleman straight down the centre. Weston's been quiet. Couldn't take it. Zubernick plays it on to Hollis. Painter did well. He's been a good player. So's Frost around his body. Simons kick four. Not Simons, that's Duthie. That's a great trap. Now Simons. Couldn't take that one. Shot's going to go straight through. What a goal by Hollis. Great way to finish it for Sturt. Hollis has kicked three goal five and the double blues have edged right away now. 16-20 to 12-21. Well, I think if anyone ever doubted that Gary Mowsley had any league football left in him, they would have noticed that in this last quarter he's done three excellent things and that bit of play then was the finale to what's been a very, very pleasing debut for him, I'm sure. And he looks as though he's going to fit into the Sturt team with some degree of success. Still carrying the ruck. Kernahan's played the whole of this quarter at full forward, and so is Davies for that matter. What a game for Graham. Derrington, the front spot, all solid tackle there by Derrington and also by Smith rather and Barrett. Ball up. They ran straight into one another. They're picking themselves up groggily. Well, Smith marked that almost, Bruce. Actually, he stopped it there. They hurt themselves. A lot of jam between them. Derrington hurt as well. Smith looks to be all right. Barrett okay. Derrington still in the hands of the trainer. Over the top, Davies laid it on to Howard. Howard's missed it, though. Once upon a time, he'd never missed those, Bruce. He's obviously feeling a little bit tired. Out of bounds on the full. Coleman bringing it in. Marshall. Zubernick. He does some silly things. Just an unnecessary push. Marshall. Beautifully executed kick. Spill. Corns. Played a good game this afternoon. 
goes short across the centre. Whittlesey coming from the back, spoils away, recovers. Carey stands in his road, knocks it on. Weston, Simons, running into the full face of goal. It just chips it back across to Ralph Sewer. And the final siren blows with Ralph Sewer with an opportunity to kick a goal. What a great finish, Jack He must have been pleased talking to Andrew Zilm after the game. Sturt winning 16-20 to 12-21. Davies and Hollis kick three goals, five each. Pay kick three goals without a miss. Pfeiffer and Zilm two each. Simons, a splendid game, four. Kernahan three. And after the game, I spoke to Paul Hollis. Paul, it was a great finish, wasn't it? Oh, yes. Uh, we were in trouble there for a while, a couple of points up. But uh, like we've done so many times this, this year, we've rallied when we've been down. Well, we look like going down, perhaps. And... Uh, Boys came through again. You seem to have a very good relationship with Rick Davies in that forward area between you. It seems to be a great combination. Uh, well, I'm a bit out of position at the moment. He's, uh, I have to work my game around Rick's because uh, he's mainly the, the spearhead this year. Everyone's kicking it in long to Rick. And I've been having a few problems this year about reading the play and getting in the right position at the right time. Rick, what was going through your mind in that last quarter, standing at full forward with Glenelg making a dash at Sturt? I myself thought to myself, if the ball comes down here again, I'm going to grab it and take it home with me because I'd kick badly all day. Both Paul and myself had kicked badly all day. And I thought that if we could get one goal, um, we had a chance. And the ball comes down with the players that we've got, the Radbones and Michael Graham especially, uh, brought the ball down. We kicked a couple of goals and we, were, we got out of it. Who won the rucks from, from the Grand Centre? Look, Frank Spool early and Peter Carey in the second half. Uh, yes, but I think in the last quarter, Frank uh, got back and we got a few touches vital and we got the ball down forward and scored a couple of goals. Speaking about goals and vital touches, what about that goal you kicked late in the game, Tony? Yeah, I was pleased to kick the goal. Um, I've been kicking straight lately. I just hope I can keep, keep going that way. Well, firstly, Peter, I think we should congratulate you for a magnificent personal performance, a wonderful second half effort. You must be pretty tired, mate. Yeah, it was a pretty hard game. Uh, the ground was a little bit heavy. Uh... You know, I just wish we, we had a, the opportunity to win it and we didn't. I just wish we had a won it. Do you think there was a telling moment in that last quarter because Glenel just kept fighting back and they had a real chance after Hartfield a goal? Oh, I don't think there was a number of chances we had. Sort of, we missed a lot of shots today from within range that we could have kicked. Uh, you know, I don't think there was... I think after Stephen Kernahan kicked the goal to bring us within three points, I think if we had got it out of the centre that time, I, you know, we would have been in with a chance. But they got it out, got it in their forward line and scored. And uh, if anything, that was about the 23-minute mark. I thought uh, Sturt's next goal then, you know, really made it hard for us. A disappointed and tired Peter Kerry, but what a valiant performance. A wonderful game, Sturt staying on the top of the ladder. Well, the chairman of the State Selection Committee... Jeff Motley has just phoned through the state squad for the game to play Western Australia on July the 17th. There are 25 players named and in team order, Port Adelaide have nine representatives. Belton, Cunningham, Eckerman, Evert, Evans, Giles, Hughes, Johnston and Phillips. So nine from Port Adelaide. From Norwood, five, Andrew and Michael Aish, Danny Jenkins, Peter Lachlan and Frank Stemper. Four from Glenelg, Peter Kerry, Tony McGuinness, Ralph Sewer, and Paul Weston. Sturt have three. Eddie Fry, Michael Graham, and Greg Whittlesey. West Adelaide one, Dexter Kennedy. North Adelaide one, John Riley. Central Districts one, John Platten. South Adelaide one, Mark Naley. 25 name, no Rick Davies there for Sturt, but 25 players in the state squad to play against Western Australia in Perth on July the 17th. We'll come back after the break and we'll be going to the Elizabeth Oval.